A lot of people focus on getting more followers on social media, but the truth is your email list is much more valuable. I'm going to tell you why in just a moment, but before I get to that, I want you to think about this one question for a moment. If you saw a business that had a low social media following, do you automatically think that they are less experienced or less successful of a business versus someone who has a massive following on social media? Most people wouldn't. Honestly, I truly just think that's sad. I know so many successful business owners who either don't have a social media presence or they have a small following that doesn't really represent their business success. Unfortunately, social media has brought us back really to this popularity insecurity that high school brought out in us. People stress and stress about getting more followers, getting more likes, getting more views. But really at the end of the day, a lot of those accounts who have massive followings, they aren't as engaged as those smaller following accounts. Now, of course, that is a generalized concept. There are great accounts with large followings, but the entire point of this little rant is that just because people don't have a massive following, millions of people following them, doesn't mean that they aren't successful. Doesn't mean that they aren't good at what they do, that they aren't providing a good value, good services, good products to their clients or customers. It's just that they haven't put in the time and energy into to growing their social media following. Now, I'm obviously not saying that you shouldn't focus on social media in general. You should, especially if you want to be seen in the online world, but I don't recommend making it your everything. There are so many different ways that you could use social media to grow your business versus getting wrapped up in this whole, how many followers do you actually have? How many likes did I get today? And trust me, I get that it is easier said than done not to get wrapped up in this whole popular number game. For the last few months, actually, I have been deleting followers off of my social media, not because I don't want the numbers, but because I don't know if these individuals are my dream clients. And I know that if they're not, I can't actually serve them. Some days I look at my account and I get wrapped up in the whole, what would people think of me now that I have less than 15,000 followers? Do I look less professional of a digital marketer? I run a business 100% online and leverage social media for a portion of that. Does not having these followers really affect my credibility? Honestly, it's a vicious cycle that you can continuously go down. But I have to remind myself, just as I want to remind you today, it is just a number. I could lose my social media account tomorrow and it would have no direct impact on my knowledge, my skills, or my business success. And that's another point, actually. People look at having a large social media following and automatically they think that that means that they are financially successful too. I know a lot of people who have a massive social media account and make zero money from it. They're not monetizing it whatsoever. But this world, unfortunately, has gotten way into our heads. I will always say that your social media, yes, it's important. Or at least in today's world, it is 100% important if you want to be seen. Having an active account, being online, and leveraging it will do wonders for your business. Still, the number of followers that you have is not the most important thing or even the most profitable thing for you. So ask yourself, would you rather be a big fish in a small sea or a small fish in a big sea? Because that's essentially what you are working with on social media. So instead of focusing so much energy on your social media following, I recommend using your social media to build an email list and a profitable marketing strategy. Now, I'm not being this straightforward today to try to knock you down and make you feel like you aren't doing the right things right now for your business, but the truth is it's pretty simple. If you only focus on your social media following aspect of your business and you ignore the part where you have to build an email list, your business may look important, but still on the back end, it's likely going to fail. Yes, I know this sounds outrageous, but just hear me out for a minute, okay? The first thing you have to understand about your social media account is that it is not actually yours. That's right. Think about it. Your social media account can be suspended at any time and you don't even have to break the rules on the platform that you're using. 
it could be sometimes an honest mistake that you just don't know that you're not allowed to do that. I mean, haven't you heard this happen before to other people? The algorithm, they may notice something being off with your account. And before you know it, you're banned. You're locked out. You're actually kicked off the platform. What happens is you would suddenly be down to zero prospects if you built your entire business model around how many followers you have on that platform. And then essentially you have to start the whole game, the whole process all over again. And this time you wouldn't be able to take your time to build it and do it right. You would be in such a rush because you're trying to capture a part of the market that you just lost. You could tell yourself that you'll be extra careful this time and you won't let yourself get banned from the platform even though you have no idea what you actually just did wrong. But getting banned isn't even the worst thing for your account. You actually could be hacked on social media. Yes, I know there's security that we can do, but when you are hacked, it's honestly so out of your control. And I know too many people who's been hacked more recently even. I truly do feel for them, but it's also why I encourage them to focus on the back end of their business too. That way it doesn't actually have a negative impact on them. So if you don't have any other way of connecting with your clients or prospects besides your social media account, you would be at the mercy of the hacker and they would be able to do whatever they want to do with your account, send messages to whoever. That's an extraordinary risk to take because you can go from thousands of clients and prospects one day to absolutely nothing on another day. But do you know what you do own? Your email list. If you have an email list where you send emails every single week, you'll always have a list of clients and prospects to talk to. It doesn't matter what happens to your social media account on the front end. You can be hacked 10 times, 20 times, unlimited of times, I don't care how many times you're hacked. You would still have your email list, something that you own, and you would still be able to connect with your clientele or your prospects if you build the back end of your business. Another reason it's a mistake to focus solely on social media to grow your business is because you're not actually in control. I know, I know it sounds like you're totally in control of your content and everything. It may even look like you're in control, but truthfully, you're not. Look at it this way. No one outside of Google or Meta knows exactly how the algorithm works. No one knows how often it's updated. No one knows the magical button that you have to press to get on the top of feeds. Sure, people who use social media all the time, they can tell you what they do, but really what works on one account doesn't work on every other account out there. You literally control nothing. All you are doing is responding or reacting to the algorithm. You're not actually using it. That's why you can post a picture or a thousand pictures, let's say. Maybe let's say you have a thousand followers and only a few of them would actually like that picture. But then somewhere else, someone with a less than thousands of followers, they would post that exact same photo and they would get thousands of likes on that picture. Now, of course, this is besides the point, since that's essentially what algorithms are meant to do. They're here to play the game. There's no way to play that game without losing at least half of the time. Well, with email marketing, it certainly doesn't have the reach of social media you are usually capable of controlling your success with them. The rules are defined. You know exactly what to do and you know exactly what not to do. And it usually ends up working in your favor if you follow the set of rules. Now with social media, you really only know half of what you're supposed to do and half of what kind of works. And you're supposed to magically put those two halves together to try to make a whole great content creation strategy. Now, sometimes it works out and other times it's a complete waste of time and nothing works out in your favor. One aspect where social media fails with connecting with your clients or your prospects is the area of personalization. Sadly, social media essentially sacrifices reach for personalization. Now, reach is certainly enough to convert some potential clients. I'm not saying it's not. If 10,000 people sees your content and engage with it, at least 100 of them would pay attention to you enough and that they actually want to check you out. But one way to increase those numbers is through personalization, which is something email marketing does really, really well and why I love it. With emails, you can refer to potential clients by their names, give them a truly an amazing experience and make them feel loved and value. The process will certainly increase the conversion rate because you have that personal connection. 
However, the reach will certainly be incomparable. Another reason that email marketing has such a high converting rate rather than social media marketing is because you are targeting people who already know you, which is actually a warmer audience. You aren't just targeting anyone you find on the internet, which is essentially what social media is doing. It's allowing you to reach more people on the internet. With email marketing, you are targeting people who have already shown interest in what you have to say. More people from that pool will actually take you seriously and want to hear from you. You know what? Let's actually go down this rabbit hole and get right to the numbers just because I can nerd out on you just a little bit. Let's talk a bit deeper about stats. Here are really three things that you should know about email marketing. So first of all, the average email open rate is between 20 and 25% depending on the strategy that you actually have running. This means that up to 25% of the people on your email list will actually open the email that you send. The second is that email marketing has an average click-through rate of roughly 2.5%. And the third is that the average click to open rate will be between 20 and 30%. This is what you get if you're using email marketing for your business. However, social media has even worse numbers. On Facebook specifically, you'll get an offer click-through rate of about 0.07%. On Instagram, it's slightly better, 0.22%. I've been combining social media and email marketing for seven years now, and that's where the real magic happens. And truly, how you can really leverage social media to grow your business You can use it to build your email list and then be in front of your warm audience continuously. Now, if you need a bit more convincing, let's actually talk about the return on investment between the organic social media that you do and email marketing. Did you know that email marketing generates $38 for every $1 spent, which is a 3,800% return on investment? Social media comes in at a very distant second with an estimate average return on investment of 28%. Now, of course, in the end, it all boils down to what you want and what your marketing strategy is and who you're targeting. But from where I'm standing, the answer is really obvious. Now, I do both because it grows my business in really different ways. As I said, I leverage social media to reach more people, but the goal is to get them into my email list to take it off of social media. I'd recommend that you do both but you should also pay more attention to using social media to grow your email list versus followers because they are high value leads that you cannot lose. Remember, you own that. One reason why people choose social media marketing over email marketing is because of engagement. Well, here's the thing. Email marketing may not have accurate metrics for measuring likes and comments, but we know that people usually check their emails more frequently than they do social media. Studies have shown that more than half of internet users check their email first thing in the morning, before they look at Instagram, before doing a Google search, and before checking the weather. If you want to be like me and build your business using both methods, Here's exactly what you need to know. You want to try to use social media marketing to build your email list. The more email addresses that you can collect off of social media, the higher your ceiling goes. Now remember that every email that you get is a potential high quality client that you can convert. By building your email list, you'll be able to reach more people and actually measure it. And your business will be able to make a business plan based on the numbers of potential clients that you get. It just really makes things really easy for you. All I'm saying in this episode is that social media is not your business. It's just a part of your business. It's a part of your strategy. It's one small piece. Your clients are your business. Your online course is your business. Your product is your business. And the email list is the best way to categorize your clients and prospects with an interaction piece of the puzzle. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't make social media content or that you should give up on social media altogether. You absolutely shouldn't. I'm not saying that. Your social media in this case is what you are using to grow your reach, to attract potential clients to you. And the other things like your freebies, your lead magnets, your emails is what you can offer them to get them to stay with you, to get them off of social media. When you start to nail this down, you'll be blown away by what can actually happen on the back end of your business, even if you have 500 followers. 
Now to help you get started with email marketing and to learn how to actually attract laser targeted leads through social media, I did put together a quick guide for you. So what I'll do is I'll link it right below and that way you can download it for free. Now I've also included in this guide how you can grow your email list automatically through social media. This is where we really pick things up a notch and we pick up the speed. But of course, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me. This is also exactly what I teach within my Spotlight Theory program. So I'll link that down below for you just in case you wanna check it out. But your first step is not forgetting to download the guide. Just click the link in the show notes and I'll email it over to you. And of course, if you learn something new today, do me a favor, like this episode. The more that you actually tell me what you like, the more I know what episodes, topics that you actually wanna hear and I'll just keep creating them for you. Or even better, send me a message on social media. You can find me at Lisa Ann Coaching and tell me what topics you want me to dive deeper into. What can I help you with? I am seriously here to help you succeed in the online world. Oh, and before I forget, don't forget to subscribe so that you're always notified when a new episode comes out. Again, my name is Lisa Ann and that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.